Hello and welcome to News Pulse. I'm Esther, former five-time Chief Minister of Nagaland, former Governor of four states and senior Congress leader Dr. S. E. Jamir was awarded the nation's third highest civilian award, the Padma Bhushan, in the field of public affairs by the President of India, Ram Nath Kovin, in New Delhi today. Dr. S. E. Jamir is one of the founders of the state of Nagaland and the sole living signatory of the 16-point agreement with the late Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, and his team in 1960, on the basis of which the state of Nagaland was formed within the Indian Union. He was the first Lok Sabha member to represent Nagaland in Parliament in 1961. He was Parliamentary Secretary to Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and Deputy Minister under Indira Gandhi. Dr. Jamir served as Governor of Goa, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Odisha. He was also a member of the Congress Working Committee for many years. As Chancellors of the States he served, he has reformed selection of Vice Chancellors whereby making selection transparent and purely on merit. With many accolades and awards to his name and now the prestigious Padma Bhushan, Hornbill TV is honoured to have the veteran politician Dr. S. E. Jamir on our channel. Good evening, sir. First of all, many and heartiest congratulations to you. Hello, sir. Congratulations, first of all. Well, thank you. It, thank you. It is indeed a very proud moment for all of us in uh, Nagaland. Um, first of all, how do you feel for yourself and also for Nagaland getting one of the highest civilian awards? Well, uh, I have rendered my uh, humble service to the country and the people of Nagaland for the last more than 60 years. Yes, sir. And it was out of my conviction mm -hmm. that we have to work with commitment and with conviction and with honesty. Yes, sir. But I have never asked from any quarter this award or that award. Mm -hmm. But I'm indeed extremely happy with the present government that they have recognized my very, very humble contribution to the country and the people. Okay. And I'm really very happy that uh, at least today, I had the privilege of attending that uh, function as a very old man today. And uh, it was a memorable uh, occasion for me. Yes, and perhaps this will be the last, uh, first and the last, as far as my, my, my uh, attendance and such occasion is concerned. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, you have been governor of four states and also five-time chief minister of our state, Nagaland. So which one do you think would say is, you know, more uh, efficient for you as personally or, you know, more public friendly? Which one do you think would you have preferred more? Actually, it is the blessing of the people that I have become a chief minister. I have become member of parliament, and I have become a uh, union minister. And, mm -hmm. and with the blessings of uh, the leaders of uh, the country, I could hold the uh, offices of governors. And all these are, uh, I think, uh, blessings uh, both from the well-wishers uh, of the people and the leadership of the country, and above all, I think it is God's blessings that has prevailed upon the minds of those people Mm -hmm. who have got authority to confer such a uh, position to me. Great. Thank you, sir, for saying that. And also, Nagaland is considered one of the most uh, backward, I would say, in a lot of aspects, in the Northeast especially. Nagaland is considered to be, uh, you know, lacking behind in a lot of aspects. So what do you think or feel are the causes for this? My personal and very honest view about Nagaland is this. Yes, sir. Naga people are hardworking. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of opportunities for the development of the state. And especially the younger generation, they have tremendous potentialities to take the people forward. But because of this unsettled political issue, mm -hmm. everything has been kept under suspicion and the system has been completely destroyed by various agencies once settlement comes yes i think a peace will be restored normalcy will be restored and from that time 
I think our people have to redouble their strength in order to catch up the rest of the people. And I'm very hopeful that the present government be, is very serious that the Naga people should live in peace and prosperity. I think that is my belief, okay. and I hope that Naga people would respond to this gesture of goodwill, mm -hmm. the gesture of pragmatic approach to the Naga problem. <clears throat> I think we should not live in the past, but it's time that Naga people should live in the present and look for the future. That's what I believe. Okay, sir. Uh, on the same lines, uh, what do you believe is uh, Nagaland at with, when it comes to the peace talks? Are we closing in on an agreement uh, in the near future, very near future? Are we there? I, I beg your pardon? The Naga peace talks, sir. Uh, are we closing in on it? Do you feel that we are getting close to it, sir? To come to no. an agreement? I, I have expressed my view on this mm -hmm. and nothing to add to that, this also. No? Okay. Uh, okay, sir. And, sir, coming to uh, the obvious question, uh, finally, sir, what is the future of uh, Congress, according to you, sir, personally? You know, politics, no, nothing is permanent. Huh? Yes, sir. Because sometimes it's up, some it is down. Mm -hmm. So, depending on the situation in the whole country. Today, yes, Congress uh, position appears to be uh, in quite difficulties, mm -hmm. but let us see how far it can be resurrected uh, in the course of time. But as, yes, as of now, I feel that the Congress is in a very, I think, difficult position. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, thank you so much for speaking to Hornbill TV, and once again, congratulations on this prestigious award. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you.